Hi and welcome to the Beer Temple. I am Chris Quinn coming to you from the upstairs, the actual shopping portion of the store today. Not down in the depths, but I thought this tasting was, was fitting. Um, had some extra time today, so I figured why not do something a little special. Uh, a few episodes ago, I did a blind tasting of, I think it was seven of the nine Lambic brewers coming out of the, you know, the Seine Valley region in Belgium. Uh, that being, um, you know, let's see, Detroit, Cantillon, Dreyfontein, Jardin, uh, Lindemans, Timmermans, and Detroit. And talk a little bit about the process of making Lambic and how Goose is essentially a blend of three years of Lambic, a one year, two year, and three year old Lambic. Interesting thing about Lambic is historically there have been brewers of Lambic who you know brew and blend their own, but there are also blenders and they don't actually brew the beer, they just buy the wort and sometimes they buy it aged, sometimes they buy it unaged and age it themselves and then they make their own blends. Sometimes they're blending strictly from one brewer and sometimes they're taking Lambic from multiple different brewers and blending it. So <clears throat> kind of combining house characters to make their own. Really kind of cool and fascinating art form and people are doing it kind of uh, on commercial scales but also on their own. These like really tiny small time blenders as well who maybe just you know blend uh, enough for, for a week or, or, or I don't know exactly how long it lasts them but just kind of doing it in their own basement essentially like home, home brewers but home blenders. So what I wanted to do is take there are currently four commercial Lambic blenders out there and I have all four here so we did the blind tasting of the Lambic brewers let's do now a blind tasting of the Lambic blenders. So I've got here, uh, your right and my left, I've got Hansen's, uh, Tilken, Decam, and Udbeersel. So should be really fun. Again, these guys are not doing anything on their own in terms of the brewing, but really just the, the blending, but not just the blending because a lot of the Lambic uh, brewers and blenders will say it. it is all about the blending. So very kind of fun and uh, you know, exciting thing to, to get to, to take. So I don't necessarily know which, which one I'll be tasting first just because they're in this order does not mean that that's the order that I will be drinking them in. Uh, in fact, I'll start this way and uh, take a look. Um, they're more or less going to look kind of the same. I'll talk about the differences a little bit in terms of color, but all these are, are fairly still looking. Goose is typically going to have some eper, effervescence. Um, this one is beautifully clear, really nice rich golden color. And man, great Great character in the nose, so complex. Every time I would go back in and sniff it, I was getting more stuff. So, a lot of funk, a lot of that horse blankety Britannomyces note, a lot of stone fruit as well, apricot, peach. Again, this is all coming from the yeast. This is not coming from actual fruit. There are a lot of fruit additions that are historically made to Lambic, uh, cherry or creek being the, the most historically uh, well, the most historic, um, but they do all sorts of fruit now. Um, but in this case, there is no fruit in there. This is all coming from the yeast and, and the esters and the phenolics that are being output by the yeast and the bacteria. Um, in addition to that, I do get uh, a nice kind of woody character as well. And the phenolics, the funk on this one is, is pretty... <laughs> advanced. It's got a lot of that kind of pencil eraser, rubbery note to it, um, not quite spicy uh, or I'm sorry, smoky or plasticky, but starting to get to that. I think it is really nice. It's this really intense, almost like burning rubber and fruit and it sounds very gross, but it's, it's really nice.
Hmm. Surprisingly still, um, very sour. It's got a very lemony sour. It does not have a lot of like a vinegar sour note, a lot of lactic acid here. <clears throat> um, just a very nice, clean lemon sour and uh, a bit of a hint of like a chalky note to it. And that same funk kind of coming through. Really nice beer. And underlying all that, a lot of that fruit as well. It's like a sour peach character going on here. Really good stuff. This beer looks very similar. Just a hint of carbonation. That is the one main difference. It might be a hint darker as well, but beautifully clear. You know, in there is yeast in all these beers. These are all bottle conditioned. In fact, they're often, I, I believe, a year they sit in the bottle after the blend and just condition for a further year. Um, but all in, in that time, that yeast has dropped out and just created such a beautifully bright uh, beer. Got a call coming, which I will hang up on. No offense to that person. So this beer does not have that, the same funkiness to it. Um, I'm curious if this is going to influence or kind of, you know, set the bar in in a, a, an extreme uh, fashion because it was so funky to start. And that more um, subtle beers may, that follow it, may be at a disadvantage, but it has that same uh, funkiness to it and fruitiness, but they, they're just softer, more muted, a little more lemon to them, not getting that same oakiness. And this one is definitely a little bit more of a pencil eraser versus a, uh, a burning like tire type thing. Mm. Overall, it is more subtle. The acidity isn't there. Very delicate. It's got a nice kind of carbonation to it as well, which I, I do really like. Um, a hint of a, almost like a metallic note to it at the end. And uh, almost like a tannic quality as well, maybe from the wood, you know. Um, a, a hint of stringent too, kind of like drying my mouth out. It's nice, um, really nice, refined, delicate, uh, not as kind of in your face in either the yeast character or the acid level as this one. Okay, uh, third, this beer is also clear. It's not as vibrantly clear. Um, sometimes when you're opening up these beers, they get agitated and some of that yeast gets back into solution. So who knows if I you know, let this bottle sit and then pour it, not this one necessarily, but then pour it again, it would be maybe a little different. This one, uh, is showing some signs of age. Um, I'm trying to see. Uh, it looks like they're all roughly within a year or two old. Um, so this one has a bit of kind of a musty, sherry, uh, earthy quality to it. Maybe a little um, like dried leaves, mushrooms, stuff like that. A little oxidation. You have that fruit as well. It doesn't have that same funky phenolics, but the fruitiness is there too, that apricot and peach. Mm. Very spritzy, very heavily carbonated, kind of pops in your mouth. Um, really nice. And those phenolics are there as well, like as you kind of get acclimated to that mustiness underneath it, there is some of that funk too, that barnyard horsey note. Really nice. These are all warm too. I would like to have this one chilled. I think it would do a lot for it. That is a really cool 
like sour peach thing, sour apricot going on. This stone fruit with a, a hint of sour. It's not straight, you know, lemony sour like this guy, um, but it's certainly present and, and really nice. Yeah, I like that one. And finally, this one, uh, I did not pour these beers, but I know one of them kind of gushed a little bit. I'm guessing it's going to be this one just because it is murky. Uh, that being the yeast that has kind of sat at the bottom of the bottle when it all kind of gets thrown up, gets kind of tossed around. So you can tell that this one is, uh, you know, certainly has carbonation, but is also a little bit more murky. Not that big a deal. Mm. Oh man, there is a fruit fly that I'm trying to kill, so you might have to bear with me. Son of a... Three days I've been trying to kill this thing. It's like... I call him like the, the road runner. It's like, and I'm wild, wily coyote. He just like phew, shoots away. Anyway, sorry, had to be done. This one's really nice too. It's got a more like ripe stone fruit, ripe peach character to it. A little bit of funk, but not as much. A lot more wood, almost like a, a hint of like a vanilla character to it. Hint of like peaches and cream. And uh, like like a hay, dusty, barnyardy thing too. Man, this is gonna be really, really hard to decide which one I like the best. Um, this one is great. It's got a wonderful fruit note. It's the fruitiest of any of them. It's got a little more mouthfeel to it as well, a little softer. I think that might be because of that yeast that's in there. Great, um, great like kind of lively, bubbly character as well. Um, mm. Yeah, I really like that kind of peach, cream, and oak. Um, a little dusty, not as intensely funky as this guy. Uh, Man, I don't know. This one, I will say right now, C, I have them labeled A, B, C, D here, is probably my least favorite. This one's a little skunky too. It's got a little light struck character to it, which is surprising to me. It's so delicate and nice. All right, man. really good. I think whatever's in this glass is at a disadvantage because it's so subtle that ex next to these guys, they're so much bigger. Um, that said, um, that fly is taunting me. Um, it's landing right on the glass. I want to kill it so bad. Get out of here, fly. Favorites, man, tough to say. It's definitely A, D. If I had to say, I'd probably go A, D, and then B, C. So I'll say A, D, B, C, but it could easily, this is very general. These are all really good. I would be happy to get any of these. Really, really good. Okay, Nick, moment of truth. All right, so we'll go. So I'll guess what are they. Um, I'm gonna guess Tilkin. Decam, just because it's so funky. Man, this is where it gets hard. Uh, well, I mean, I've, I have no idea. So this is all a guess. Um, I'll say, this could also be Hanson's. I mean, they make some sour stuff. Um, 
B would be Hansen's, C would be Beersol. I could see this being Beersol, that being the cam. Let's see. A, Tilken, so that is right. That's that fruitiness that I get from Tilken. I, I really like that beer a lot. Uh, D is Hansen's. Okay, so I had said officially Decam, but it could have been Hansen's. BC, Decam, Beersel. Okay, so pretty close. It was my second best guess. Uh, I said it could be that. So, yeah, interesting. So the Hansen's, how cool is that? A beer that you can find on the shelf, super funky, super sour, um, really kind of cool. So then to my preference, I had them like this. This one, I don't think you can really get the goose in the States. You can buy their Lambic. Um, really nice stuff. This is, is great too, just a little bit more delicate than, than all the rest, but I'm telling you, um, they're, all, they're all really, really good. So, um, fun stuff. Uh, but yeah, for my money, the Tilken it was my favorite. Um, not a big shocker there. I just really like the profile of what's going on here. I think this guy is making the best blends coming out of Belgium to me. Um, but you never know. Day to day, bottle to bottle, I easily could have gone with, with the Hansons over it. Or even at the can, they're also close. Anyway, guys, uh, I'm talking on and on. But thank you so much. Hopefully this was informative to you and helps you kind of guide what you kind of pull off the shelf next time you're looking for a blended lambic thanks uh you know as always for the the emails and the reviews and, and all the itunes love that does help us out also there is a new podcast that we're doing called the insiders roundtable separate podcast separate feed you can go into itunes and subscribe to that as a long it's a long form audio podcast that we're doing where we're getting kind of industry people and having kind of more topical long-form discussions about beer. So if you're interested to learn a little bit about the inner workings, you know, how the sausage is made type stuff, uh, check that out. And if you have any questions, uh, shoot us an email. Until next time, guys, I've got some awesome blended lambics to, uh, to drink, and hopefully you do too. Cheers.